Good morning, good morning. We thank God for each and every one of you that are tuning in to our Sunday morning worship celebration here at Love Fellowship Church. As you can see, we are not in the house of God. We are online and we did have some technical difficulty on this morning where we were trying to link our Zoom to Facebook Live and there were some challenges with that. And so we've had to modify what we wanted to share with you on today. But the word, my God, the word shall not be modified. Hallelujah. And we just thank God for each and every one of you and your flexibility. We, we believe by faith that God is still moving no matter what the enemy tries to do. I truly believe that God will, his word will not be stopped. Amen. No matter how many challenges or difficulties we face in our lives. So we're going to open up in a word of prayer and we're going to dive into the word of God. And we truly believe that the word of God has the power to transform our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this awesome opportunity that you've given unto us to connect with people that are tuning in by way of Facebook Live today, by way of our prayer line here at Love Fellowship Church. We honor you. We praise you. We magnify you. We exalt you in the name of Jesus. We lift up your holy and your righteous name, for truly you are worthy of all the glory, worthy of all the honor, and worthy of all the praise. Lord, we ask ask even now that you would lead us, guide us, and direct us by way of your Holy Spirit. We desire, Lord Jesus, to have a closer and more intimate relationship with you, entering into your presence. For we believe by faith that in your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your presence, Lord, there is joy forevermore. We're so thankful for the presence of God today, the power of God that comes through the presence of God. We believe by faith that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. You be glorified. You be exalted in this teaching on today, Lord. And we just ask even now that you would speak to the hearts and the minds of every person that is tuning in from the north, south, east, and west. No matter what nationality, no matter what ethnicity, we believe by faith that God, you are able to do what no one else can do in our lives. And we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Well, I decree and declare that this is a temporary situation, amen. We are about to transition. Love Fellowship Church is about to transition into the blessed place that God has prepared for us. Amen. He has prepared a place for us and as a ministry, and we're transitioning into the new house of God. On January the 20th will be our first live service in the new house of God. So amen. We are just in this transitional season just as the children of Israel, my God, they were in a transitional season. And we're thankful, we're grateful, amen, that we have this opportunity to connect with you in the word of God. So, so we've been teaching on this series in, taught in terms of entitled Repositioning for Greater in 2022, that God wants you to be repositioned for greater in 2022, my God. And I wanna continue in that vein of teaching the subtitle is that's love. Wow. The subtitle is that's love. We're going to see today, amen, that really we can't be repositioning God without love. Wow. God's love literally, amen, repositioned the children of Israel from a place of bondage to a place of promise. <laughs> oh, we're going to see that today, how God's love repositioned the children of Israel from a place of bondage to a place of promise. Uh, but before we do that, let's go back to our foundational uh, text, which is Isaiah 59 and verse number 19. Isaiah chapter number 59, verse number 19 in the word of God, amen. And it says this, uh, so shall they fear the name of the Lord. I'm reading out of the King James Version. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, 
the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Wow. And we know that love has to be a part of the standard. In fact, love is the standard because God is love. Wow. Amen. Love is the standard because God is love. He doesn't do love. He is love. It's the embodiment of who he is. So we understand the text here when the prophet Isaiah says, the enemy shall come, uh, but the standard, watch this, shall be raised against him. So we know that there's a standard and it's incumbent upon us to understand as born again believers what the standards are. Wow. And we've been teaching some of the standards. Amen. But today we want to deal with this love standard. Hallelujah. Because we got to raise our standard of living. And in order to raise your standard of living, you got to raise your standard of loving. Wow. Somebody to put that in the chat box. Amen. Hashtag raise your standard of loving or, or, or raise your standard. Amen. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. We ought to raise our standard of loving. My, 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 my. So today, 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 I want you to have that framework of that's love. Hallelujah. When you see love, amen, you know love. Hallelujah. When you see love, you should respond to love. When And, and God is love. Hallelujah. So when you, amen, see God moving, you ought to respond to the move of God. When you see God moving, you ought to respond to the move of God. Truly, I believe by faith that God is moving, even though the enemy may be moving also. Wow. <laughs> Just a small example. What happened this morning with the technical challenges, amen? The enemy was moving. We know that the Bible calls Satan the prince of the air. But guess what? We give him no glory, but the Bible calls him the prince of the air. All of the technology doesn't run through trucks and cars and planes. It runs through airwaves, amen? It runs through fiber optics. So we know Satan can even twist some of that stuff. But even in the midst of the enemy trying to come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, which is love, hallelujah, can raise up a standard against him. And I truly believe today, whatever your opposition is, amen, whatever your challenge is, instead of, amen, digging a hole and getting depressed and stressed about it, raise your standard of living by raising your love walk, hallelujah. So many people are allowing what's happening to them to affect them. And I believe by faith, it's not what what happens to you, but what's happening through you, amen, that matters the most. Raise your standard of living by raising your standard of loving. Wow, wow, wow. So let's go over here to Joshua chapter number 24 in the Amplified Classic Version. Joshua chapter number 24, and we're going to be reading in the Amplified Classic Version on today. This is the last chapter in the book of Joshua. And it's really, we're going to focus in on verse number 11, starting at verse number 11. This is the end of the book. This is the end of the season of Joshua. Wow. Joshua is coming to a place where all the heavy lifting had been done. All the stuff that Joshua needed to do was done, my God. And now Joshua was in a situation where, amen, he was reflecting as God had him to reflect. And we want to see how love, because God is love, right? So whatever God does, love is doing. Hallelujah. Agape is doing what God does. Hallelujah. So notice, notice, notice in Joshua 24, and we're going to look at it in the Amplified Classic Version, starting at verse number 11. It says, so you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho. Wow. You went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, as did the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the, Gir the Girgashites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and I gave them into your hand. Wow. So the enemy came in like a flood. 
and God raised up a standard against the enemies of Israel. He says, so you had this opposition, you had all of these armies coming up against you, but the latter part of verse number 11, and I gave them into your hand. Somebody ought to say, that's love. Wow. He says in verse 12, I sent the hornet that is the terror of you before you, which drove two kings of the Amorites out before you. But it was not by your sword now, nor by your bow. Wow. Everybody ought to say, that's love. Hallelujah. He says, I have given, watch this. I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities you did not build. Wow. Let me stop right there. So what is going on here? Joshua is reciting from the children of Israel's perspective how God took them from a place of bondage to a place of promise. Wow. <laughs> and I want to decree and declare to you this morning that God wants to do the same thing in your life. He wants to take you from a place of bondage to a place of promise. Wow. Whatever the challenges are in your life, that represents bondage. That represents the same thing it did with the children of Israel. You may have, amen, depression, but they had the Amorites. You may have sickness, but they had the Hittites. You may have job loss, but they had, my God, the Jebusites. They had their ice. They had their bondage. They had their challenges, but love delivered them. God and his love delivered them out of every challenge, my God. When we look at it, hallelujah, when we look at how God moved in their life, God moved in such a way that no matter what challenge, no matter what the bondage was, there was always a promise that God was leading them to. And I like what verse number 13 says, because it is so powerful. He said, I, get, I have given you a land which you did not labor for. Wow. Who gave it? Love gave it. Hallelujah. God gave it. And God is love. Hallelujah. He gave them something that they could not give themselves. Wow. And I think about, amen, where we are right now. I think about, hallelujah, how we have gone from a place of bondage and we're about to step into a place of promise as a ministry at Love Fellowship Church. And I believe by faith, the same way he did it for Joshua and the children of Israel, the same way he did it for Love Fellowship Church, this is the same way he can do it for you. He doesn't, he doesn't remove the challenges. Wow. The part of the repositioning is to understand that God does not remove all the challenges. He raises up a standard against the challenges. Wow. In other words, he is not going to take the devil out of the earth until the set time as Revelation says. There is a set time for the devil to be removed from the earth. But while he's still roaming about in the earth, God has a standard, amen, that can defeat him. Hallelujah. God has a standard that can overcome him. God has a standard that can remove him out of your situation. And that a part of that standard is love. Everybody ought to say, that's love. That's love. That's love. What we see going on on is a love story here in Joshua 24. He is reflecting on all that God had done for the children of Israel, bringing them from a place of bondage into a place of promise. Wow. If you go back and you study that whole chapter out, he even talks about how he brought them out of Egypt. Amen. The place of bondage there and brought them into the new land. Hallelujah. He says in verse 13, I have given you a land for which you did not labor in cities you did not build. Who does that but love? Hallelujah. Who gives somebody land, amen, and buildings and cities that they did not earn or work for? The love of God does that. So I want you to think for a moment. I want you to 
uh, exercise your spiritual imagination for a moment. And I want you to just imagine God giving you stuff, wow, that you, you couldn't work for, you couldn't take credit for. You knew it had to be God and God alone. Wow. Some people right now are so caught up in their feelings that they don't even realize that love is what's keeping them alive. Wow. <laughs> I want to submit to you that if God ever removed his hand of love off of you, wow, let, let alone his hand of grace, but if he, if he stopped loving you, <laughs> there would be nothing to protect you from the wiles of the devil that has been sent to destroy you. For remember now, remember what the Bible says in John 10 and 10, the thief comes but to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly to the full and to the overflow. I truly believe tonight that, amen, it is because of the love of God that we are here today. How many of you believe that tonight? It's because uh, this morning, rather. If you believe that, come on and say that out loud in, in your own home. It's because of the love of God that I am here this morning. Hallelujah. It's because of the love of God that I woke up on this morning. It's because of God's love that God brought the children of Israel out of a place of bondage into a place of promise, my God. And it was God's love that repositioned them out of that place of bondage and repositioned them into the place of promise. And I decree and declare today that God's love wants to do the same thing for you. God's love, the love of God wants to reposition you out of some challenging situations that you are facing right now. The place of bondage represents challenge. The place of bondage represents frustration. The place of bondage, my God, represents difficulties, but God is repositioning us if we will allow love to do that for us from that place of bondage to that place of promise. How do you want to be repositioned from a place of bondage to a place of promise? I believe by faith that God is able to do that in your life. Hallelujah. I believe by faith that he's able to move in supernatural and miraculous ways in your life. Hallelujah. He is well able to do what no one else can do in your life. He says, I have given you a land. Verse 13 of Joshua 24. I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities you did not, in cities you did not build, and you dwell in them. In other words, you live in those places. You eat from the vineyards and olive yards you did not plant. Wow, that's love. Hallelujah. That's love, people of God. That's love. God is telling Joshua to tell the children of Israel about a love story. Hallelujah. A story of love, not because they, they deserved it. No, they wandered in the, in the wilderness for 40, 40 years because of their disobedience. Hallelujah. So it wasn't because they were so good. It wasn't because they were so perfect. And neither is it because you are so good. And neither is it because you are so perfect. God is saying, my love is good. Hallelujah. God is saying, my love is perfect. God is saying, I have an unfailing and an undying love for you. Wow. <laughs> he has an unfailing. How many of you are glad about that today? He has an unfailing and an undying love for each and every one of us. And it is important that we connect with that love. Wow. As I was reading about this, as I was studying on this and meditating on this, I just started to cry. I started to weep because I thought about how every step of the way in the kingdom project to build God a house, opposition came. Wow. Just like it did for the children of Israel. We had to, we didn't call them Amorites and Perizzites and 
Canaanites and Hittites and Girgashites and Hivites and Jebusites. We didn't call them them, but we called them contractors that stole money. We called them, amen, delays with other contractors. We called them, amen, uh, this Mecklenburg County in the city of Charlotte, not, amen, doing what they're supposed to do at time and adding stuff that, my God, after they approved stuff, we had all of that stuff. Going. We called them banks saying, see you later, bye-bye, we're canceling loans. We had all of that stuff. So don't look at this and say, well, what, how does this have relevance to me? You got to look in your situation. The Amorites is, it was the children of Israel situation, but you have your own Amorite situation. You have your own Perizzite situation. You have your own Canaanite situation, my God. You have your own Hittite, Hitt, Hittite situation. In other words, you have your own oppositions and enemies. But, the, but when the enemy comes in like a flood, wow, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. That's love. Love is a part of that standard. And what God is telling Joshua to tell the people, listen, you remember how you were repositioned from the place of bondage to the place of promise. And today we must remember that God wants to reposition us in 2022 from the place of bondage or opposition to the place of promise. Wow, the prepared places that he has in store for our lives. Oh boy, this is good, this is good. Amen, he says, he says, I've given you, I'm gonna say this one more time in verse 13, because God wants you to get this, amen. Get this, get this. I've given you a land for which you did not labor and cities you did not build and you dwell in them. Who does that? Love does that. You eat from vineyards and olive yards you did not plant. Who does that? Love does that. God's love does that for you. God's love does that for me. God's love does that for his people who receive his son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior of their lives. It's the love of God that does that for us. When we realize, when we recognize, when we understand the power of the love of God, it repositions our minds, it repositions our hearts, it repositions our lives. It takes us from a place a bondage or opposition to a place of promise. And God wants you to experience the fulfillment of his promises in 2022. God wants you to go from that place of, of that hard place to that place of promise in your life. How many of you want to go there? Hallelujah. Let love take you there. Let the love of God take you there. Let the agape love of God take you there. Wow. Notice, notice verse number 14. He says, now, therefore, Joshua says this to the children of Israel. They're all gathered together. Now, therefore, reverently fear the Lord. Wow. And serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. See, what Joshua will tell the people, listen, God is doing his part. <laughs> God has done everything that he promised us he would do. But there's a part that we must play. Hallelujah. See, obe uh, disobedience kept the children of Israel in a place of bondage. How many of you believe that? When they didn't have to wander around the, 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 the land for 40, 40 years. No, it should have only taken them 40 days and 40 nights. But uh, disobedience kept them in a land of, 
of bondage, hallelujah, where they were in the wilderness. But if we can see what God is saying through the through Joshua, amen, and the Joshua generation, it applies to us today. When we love Jesus and when we love God, we will keep the commandments. We will obey God. All he was simply saying was that, amen, come out of that place of bondage called disobedience and enter into that place of promise called obedience. Wow. And there are people today that need to come out of the place of bondage called disobedience and enter into the place of promise called obedience. Hallelujah. You cannot be repositioned when you're stuck. Hallelujah. Love comes to unstick you. Amen. Love comes to reposition you out of the place of disobedience into the place of promise through obedience to the word of God. Wow. We cannot see the love of God produce the promises of God in our life and we're stuck in the place of bondage. Love never wants you stuck in a place of bondage or a place of disobedience. God's love always wants to take you higher than where you are right now. Please understand that. Some of y'all that write that, take that notes, take notes on that, highlight that. Amen. That 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 we've got to come out of a place of disobedience into a place of obedience. That's a part of our repositioning. That's a part of how love, God's love, will reposition us for greater in 2022. He says this in verse 15. If it seems evil to you to serve the Lord. Wow. Joshua was like, God has already proven his love to us. God has already shown us his love. He says, but if that's not enough for you, wow, if you still want to wallow in pity, my God, if you still want to murmur and complain, if you still want to stay, stay stuck in the place of bondage and instead of allowing the love of God to reposition you to the place of promise, Joshua was saying, that's on you, boo. That's on you. God is not going to un, un, uproot you or reposition you to the place of promise if you don't want to go. Hallelujah. He can only do what you will allow him to do. Wow. Maybe some people don't believe God can do it. Wow. That's called a lack of faith. When you allow what affects you to be greater than what God wants to do through you, that's called a lack of faith. And when you don't have faith in God and you don't have faith in the love of God, you will never believe that God will take you out of your current situation. You will never believe that the love of God will reposition you from a place of bondage to a place of promise. But I truly believe, amen, that if you will allow the Lord to develop your faith, stretch your faith, you can begin to believe in the love of God like you never believed in God's love before. And you can decree and declare out of your mouth because God loves me, he's going to reposition me. Come on, I want you to say it with me, all the faith believers. Because God loves me, he's going to reposition me in 2022. Because God loves me, he's going to reposition me out of the challenges that I face. He's going to reposition me out of the situations that I face. He's going to reposition me out of the circumstances that I face. Because God loves me, he's going to reposition me out of the place of bondage, out of the place of pain, out of the place of hardship, into the place of promise. Wow. See, faith, my God, has to be a part of that love equation. If we do not have faith to believe in the love of God and to believe that love is a part of the standard that we re that will reposition us, then we'll always remain stuck. In 2015, wow. In 2015, God told my wife and I that he was going to reposition Love Fellowship Church from a place of where we were, amen, to the promised place that he had for us. And he had us go and stand on four acres of land, four acres of land that were for sale. And he said, just like he told the children of Israel, 
with Joshua in verse 13 of Joshua 24. And he said, I have given you a land which you did not labor for. Wow. He said, I've given you a land. The church, Love Fellowship did not have the land. We were simply standing on land that was legally was not, did not belong to the church. It belonged to another owner. But while we were, amen, where we were leasing, God sent us over there, prophetically led us over there. And he said, I've given you a land, hallelujah, in 2015. Now, seven years later, 15, 22, that's seven years. What does seven represent? <laughs> what does seven represent? Rev seven represents completion, my God. When you think about God said the promise, wow. He said, he said of the land and what I'm going to build on the land. Because he didn't just give the children of Israel land. He said, I've given you a land for which you did not labor and cities you did not build. In other words, God said, I'm going to give land and then there's going to be, I'm going to build on that land. Seven, year, seven years later, hallelujah. Seven years later, number seven, completion. Here we are, hallelujah. Here we are, amen, seeing the promise of God literally being fulfilled. It was already fulfilled seven years ago when we stood on the land. But now we see the natural manifestation of the fulfillment of God's promise. Now we see the completion in the natural of what God in heaven said was completed in the heavenly realm. Wow. Or the supernatural realm. See, you must understand that just because God doesn't move on your timetable doesn't mean God is not moving. Love is always moving. Love is always moving moving towards you. Love is always trying to move you out of your flesh and out of your feelings because I want to submit to you today that staying in your flesh is called a place of bondage. Staying in your feelings is called the place of bondage. God wants to reposition you out of the place of bondage into the place of promise. Wow. Did we know that it would take seven years to get to the place of promise physically? No, we didn't know that. We did not know it would take seven years. But what we did know, that God's love will never fail. Wow. What we did know, that God had an unfailing, undying love. And whenever God makes a promise, he will hasten to perform his word. Wow. So you got to tie love and faith together, baby. You got to make sure, amen, that you don't that you don't focus on what's happening to you, but you focus even more on what's happening through you. The love of God is working through you today. The love of God is working through you every day. You must make a decision of quality right now today as you're listening to this and teaching on this morning, it is incumbent upon you to make a decision of quality that you're going to, amen, allow God to reposition you out of the place that you are right now to the place of promise. Hallelujah. See, it first starts spiritually before it manifests naturally. There was a spiritual move that took place in Love Fellowship Church before there was a natural move. Hallelujah. But the natural move did come. The natural always uh, follows behind the spiritual. I need to say that again. This is a principle. The natural follows behind the spiritual. Perhaps you're getting frustrated because you want the natural to happen before the spiritual. In other words, there must be a spiritual change in you before there can be a natural change in you. My God, see, if you don't allow God to change you spiritually, you won't see the promises naturally. Hallelujah. If you don't allow God to change you spiritually, you won't see the answer to your prayers naturally. 
naturally. Too many people are wanting the natural before the spiritual. And God doesn't work like that, baby. He doesn't give you the natural first. No, he gives you the spiritual first. In other words, he gives you an opportunity to connect with him in the spirit realm. He gives you an opportunity to be transformed in your mind, to be renewed in your mind. He gives you an opportunity, my God, to be repositioned spiritually and the natural promises will follow the spiritual repositioning. So this is what God was saying to Joshua to tell the children of Israel. He was saying this in verse 15. You got to make this, amen, spiritual transition even as God has committed and promised a natural transition. He says this, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Wow, here it is, here it is, here it is. Joshua took them back to the spiritual, hallelujah. He took them back to the supernatural power of God. He took them back, amen, to how they really can get unstuck in whatever they're facing and whatever challenges that they face. He said, listen, he said, if it seems evil, he said, it's always your choice. And I submit to you today, it's always your choice whom you will serve. Wow. It's always your choice if you're going to stay stuck in your feelings or if you're going to stay stuck in your flesh. It's always your choice to be miserable. It's always your choice to always have a negative attitude. It's always your choice to always murmur and complain. That's your choice. If you want to be negative Nelly, go ahead and be negative Nelly. If you want to be sad Sammy, go ahead and be sad Sammy. But make a choice, amen, and and decree and declare that you don't believe God loves you because that's why you're negative. You don't believe God will move in your life because that's why you're always sad because when you truly have the love of God in your heart, it'll lift up a standard of love that will bring you out of sadness, will bring you out into a place of gladness. It'll take you from a place of promise, from a place of bondage to a place of promise. And it don't matter how many Amorites coming up against you. It doesn't matter how many Hittites are coming up against you. It doesn't matter how many Jebusites are coming up against you. It doesn't matter how many Canaanites are coming up against you. My God, it doesn't matter how many oppositions are coming up against you when you truly trust and believe in the love of God. You just got to make a choice like Joshua is saying right here. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Are you going to believe, amen, in the God of love or you're going to believe the lies of the enemies. You got to decide. I must decide. We must decide. But the decision that God has made it will never change. Wow. God has made a decision that he's going to be faithful to us even if we're not faithful to him. That's love. Wow. He's already decided to be faithful to you. He's already decided Amen. That his love, he wants to pour it out on you. But yet you got to be in a position where you receive it. Wow. In order for the love of God to change you, you got to receive this love. He says this. He says again in verse 15, we're almost done. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Rather the gods which your father served on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites and whose land you dwell. Wow. But as for me, Joshua says, and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua chose love. Joshua chose love. And when he chose love, he chose obedience. Wow. 
When he chose love, he chose faithfulness. When he chose love, he chose to look at his situations and his challenges, not as hardships, but opportunities. Wow. As I prepare to close today, I want you, amen, if you're saying I choose love, how many of you say you choose love today? How many of you want to choose God's love today? Well, if you say I choose love, then you, I want to challenge you based on the challenge that God told Joshua to give to the children of Israel. Look at your, look at your situations, your hardships as a place of opportunity and not a place of bondage. Wow. A place for God to reposition you through his love, the standard of love, out of where you are right now into the place that he has prepared for you. Yes, there may be Amorites. There may be Hittites. There may be Jebusites. There may be all of the ites. But don't focus on the ites. <laughs> don't focus on what's happening to you. Allow the spiritual repositioning to take place where it's not about what's happening to you, but it's more about what's happening through you. Wow. Joshua said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The last verse, the people answered, <laughs> what will your response be today? Wow. What will your response be to this teaching today? The people answered, far be it from me or from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Notice verse 17, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt. That was the place of bondage. From the house of bondage, I told you, who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. They said, God and God alone brought us out of Egypt, that place of bondage, into the place of promise. So we choose to serve God. They said this, and the Lord drove, up, drove out before us all the people, the Amorites who dwell in the land, for therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Wow. As I close, as I close this word and this teaching today, I will say this. Love is the standard. <laughs> when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Love is the standard. Will you allow the standard of love to reposition you for greater in 2022 out of the places of bondage into the places of promise. It doesn't matter how many ites you have or how many enemies you have or how many oppositions and hardships and pains and struggles and on and on and on, doesn't matter. What really matters is not what's happening to you, but what God wants to do through you. Let the love of God flow through you in 2022 like you never allowed it to flow before. Let it flow through you. Let it, let it flush out all the toxicity in you. Let it flush out all the bad attitudes in you. Let the love of God flush out all the wrong thoughts in you. Let the love of God flush out, amen, all the evil desires in you. Let the love of God flush out all the lustful spirits in you. Let the love of God flush out, my God, all the cursing tongues in you. Let the love of God flush out all the hateful thoughts in you. Let the love of God flush out everything that's not like him out of you. That's a part of your spiritual repositioning. Make a choice. Joshua made a choice. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. He said, I'm going to allow the love of God to reposition me. Hallelujah. And my house Make a choice today. Choose love today. Choose the standard of love. God showed us a picture of love in Joshua 24, and that's the love of God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this teaching today. We thank you. In, in spite of the opposition with technology, 
you raised up a standard against them and the word still got out. Hallelujah. The word of God still was manifested. That's love. We thank you for your love, your agape love that is so prevalent in our lives. We thank you for your agape love that will never, ever change. It is unfailing. It is unending. Lord, I pray that your people that have heard this teaching today would gravitate to the agape love of Jesus, your agape love, God, that it's not about what's happening to them, but it's more about what you want to do in and through them. We pray that the love of God would work in and through their hearts, would work in and through their minds today to reposition them spiritually as well as naturally. Now, if you're here today and you never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, we want you to know that the love of God, amen, is chasing after you right now. It is a relentless love. It is a love that is chasing after you right now. Will you allow the relentless love of God, the love that will never stop, the love that will never fail to catch up with you and to, and to, and to penetrate you right now? Let the love of God into your heart. For the Bible says this in John 3 and 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Are you a whosoever today that believes in the love of God? Are you a whosoever today that says, Jesus, I'm ready to receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. You and I, amen, are candidates to receive God's love. If that's you today and you say, Pastor Anthony, I, 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 that's me. I want to be saved. I'm ready to receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I want you to repeat this prayer after me, the prayer of salvation. Dear God, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross for my sins. And I ask you now to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me of all unrighteousness, to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. If you pray that simple prayer, I want to submit to you the love of God. Amen. Has come into your heart. Wow. And the Holy Spirit of God also has entered into your life. Go to our website. Go to the contact page, tab rather, send us your information. We want to get information back out to you to help you grow and be discipled in your relationship with God and his son, Jesus Christ. Our next appeal is that God so loved us so much that he gives us an opportunity to give unto him our tithes, our offerings, for the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. He loves when we give. He loves when you give. He loves when you are obedient in the area of giving. Wow. Just like Joshua said, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Wow. A part of our service to the Lord is giving of our times, our offerings, our gifts of love to support the kingdom work that he has established in the earth. His love says he gives us houses, he gives us land, he gives us cities, he gives us buildings, he gives us things that only he can take credit for. Only we can give God the credit for the things that he does in our life. But because he does those things, wow, doesn't negate us from responding or reciprocating by showing him how much we love us through our giving, how much we love him rather through our giving. So at this time, amen, we want you to go online. Uh, you can mail in your gift. There are multiple ways to give. When we have our live service on January the 20th at the new location, the new house of God, you can come, amen, and sow that seed right there in the new house of God. Multiple ways to give. Will you be a cheerful giver on today? Because God loves it, loves it 
when you give out of a cheerful heart. Amen. Well, we're just so excited for the word that has come forth. We're excited about what God is doing. We decree and declare that no weapon formed against you or your family shall prosper. Listen, uh, February the 20th, mark it down, notate it. February the 20th at 10.30 a.m. will be our first service in the new house of God. February the 20th at 10.30 a.m. The address is 5535 Statesville Road in the beautiful Queen City of Charlotte. 5535 Statesville Road. That is the address. We want you to prepare. We want you to invite a friend. We want you to come out and celebrate with us. We will have our Founders Weekend our Founders Weekend, where we will dedicate the new house of God. That will be on March, Saturday, March 26, and Sunday, March 27. We'll have two days of celebration, just like they did when they dedicated the temple of God in Solomon's days. Hallelujah. Oh, it's going to be a great celebration. So join in with us, connect with us, be a part of the great move of God because God surely and truly has repositioned up Fellowship Church from that place of bondage to the place of promise. Wow, from the, to the promised place that he had prepared for us and we're thankful for it and we're so grateful for you tuning in on today. God bless you and continue to have a wonderful Sunday in the Lord. Bye-bye.